Hello, friends. This is E. Giuliano, and I love price charts. I really do. And I like weekly time frames. I like looking at the longer term time frames. And so this weekly roundup, that's what it's for, really, is to look at a variety of price charts, weekly time frames. For this video, we're going to cut it down to fewer charts. Um, just because a lot of the charts that we've been covering are basically about the same point where they were last week. So you can check last week's video as well. I'm gonna start also from the back here. I'm also going to add in Rune BTC. So I like to look also at the BTC price charts because I find that they're more just ref, they were more reflective of the the, the valuation um, because it doesn't it's not a the, it's not affected by BTC USD price in some sense. I mean it is and it isn't. It always is. There's always the triangle of BTC USD and then the altcoin. But yeah, anyway, I find the BTC price charts uh, and best for me and also. Uh, not, you know, fewer people look at the BTC pairs. So I hope that these are instructional, educational, informative, informative and, and entertaining on some level for you. Oh, we went down below a thousand on track. Okay, we'll definitely take a look at that one too. So yeah, I'm gonna start actually with Luna because I've been looking at the topping nature of Luna for a while. And, um, and I just want to jump into that one. And then we will look at Rune after that and go through a bit of a um, from zero to to 100. Okay, so yeah, we still looks like we're working through potential. It's still potential because we are we are still at the highs, right? But potential divergence here of a bearish nature. Okay, you see now a little bit more clearly. Make sure that that's on the weekly only. And yeah, if you have any requests for for videos, let me know in terms of specific pairs that you're looking for with more in-depth. Now, on this chart here, I was considering some potential seven wave move. Mm, I like to use Neely method thinking, but crypto psychology price action is different than the traditional and also, well, depends on which market there's a lot less liquidity and and participation so it actually takes on different behaviors based on the type of cycle that it's in i think and i'm only just learning about waves and types of waves but it's fascinating to me so now as we look at this luna price chart it's clear here we are at a top okay we have not really been higher than we are now um, on a weekly time frame the the wick of the candle after several in a row it's not so friendly for my for me in my opinion especially because i was already getting the feeling that we would be topping at some point now where would it be i don't know it could keep going higher wherever it would be topping but starting to get the sense that we might be close or near because there is also the market sentiment that this thing could never go down or if it goes down it'll just keep going up higher i do think that uh, a trend line uh, an ascending trend line of support there once that is broken then we'll get a clear picture that we are probably topped right now having said that again reminder none of this is financial advice could go up could go down could be fast, could be slow, all kinds of things. But I look from here and it's just been one massive uptrend. And at some point things do reverse on a smaller scale, they go up and down. And then on a bigger scale, they go up and down. Mm. The question is when? So <clears throat> now, there's not much else to say. We can bring in some indicators along with it. Um, I, so yeah, that the other thing though, in terms of price action is, is, is it's a seven move, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, possibly of some sort of corrective pattern. 
uh, it's either that, okay, or you've got some sort of, um, like if we look on a monthly, we're gonna see a bit more of a potentially either a, a double zigzag or just a singular zigzag that has some, some more complexity in the, in the C wave. Either way, we are looking at potentially, you know, how many waves can you have before you're topped? So yeah, that's all I'm saying. I mean, don't get me wrong, thing could, thing could go higher, um, especially if we look on different time frames. it might show us things like that. But on a weekly, we're building that bearish divergence. So in that sense, if you're not already in, it's like, why, why what's the risk reward here? It's too, the small risk, huge, re, sorry, <laughs> small reward to the upside, huge risk. Anyway, having said that, this thing could go sideways for months before we even really know anything. But in my opinion, if we start going sideways for months, similar like this uh, or something like this, then my guess is we're likely done, but I'm wrong, you know, at least as much as I'm right in that sense, in, in that sense, I, I'm accurate and inaccurate. So, uh, but, but once it does do that, like we're, we're just, we're just much closer to this already established, you know, line and it, either it'll keep going or it breaks down. But I think we'll know sooner than that, because again, building some sense of divergence here. So it's either now, you know, in, in a sense, we're going to be doing it soon uh, or it'll just be long and drawn out. But either way, I, I think we won't be getting much pushing higher. So that is the, the sense I get on, on Luna against BTC. We'll bring in some indicators here, which don't really populate on the weekly. Um, but here we are, I guess another indication is that we're at the top of the Bollinger Band. Okay, finding rejection as we have in the past. So yeah, I mean, definitely possible to keep going, but I think the difference will be this pattern feels like it's, or looks like it's already complete. And we can use some Fibonacci extensions to look at it. It looks like it's already complete in terms of relationships. Uh, but then again, crypto goes way beyond the normal relationships of you know 61.8 and 161.8. But in this sense here, actually I would start it about here because of the, um, the way that the behavior moves with the trend line touch point. So for example, it doesn't really matter though. Uh, why is it there? It doesn't matter. Maybe you could argue there um, and arguably you could do there, but then I don't think the trend line touch point gives the same thing. So I think you would probably go to that one. So whatever, either way, you're at or around this 161.8 area. So that is already a sign in itself that there could be exhausting coming. Plus the momentum is slowing. We see that. So those are key signs, key levels. And if we look a little closer or more locally, we take, let's say coming again from that same level and we're saying, okay, look, we're pretty one-to-one -one here. Now, why am I choosing this? Yeah, I'd probably choose this as well. And we're even less than one to one. Maybe that's the, the sign of a, a reverse, you know, reverse waterfall where you're getting a slowing of momentum, but it's to the upside here. Almost like throwing a ball in the air. Eventually it slows the momentum and then it tops over and comes back down. Now price charts have different kind of behavior than just a simple ball being thrown in the air. But I think I've made my general sentiment here on this price chart and we'll see how it unfolds. Looking forward to, to that. I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure, but whoever is, I don't know. Um, yeah, that's it I'm gonna say about this for this week. Stick around for more weekly roundups. That's some Luna BTC price chart thoughts. And we're gonna move on, okay? Let's go to Rune. Okay, we'll run into Rune now. Rune, I decided to choose this one because I figured I'm hearing people talk about it. I know that it's got potential in, uh, in terms of market activity. And 
Um, and so I thought, okay, well, what's it doing against BTC? So we check, we'll use the Binance exchange. I generally go to CoinGecko and check the market and this exchange has the most volume against BTC, so we use it. And now this on a weekly is a different scenario than Luna, for, for example. Already it had a nice move up, now making a move down. So with this, with this move down, it just looks complete. It, it also has a relationship of completeness if we want, also a strength, strong completeness. So if we take this as an A wave to a, to a B wave, down to a C wave, that C wave would be about 61% of the A wave. I mean, that's pretty solid and overall um, quite nice in that sense. And also just generally, you know, nice long B wave. Even the C wave is a little drawn out. Uh, let's see if we can compare. Let's compare the A wave uh, with the C wave. There you go, about 161.8 is the C wave to the A wave. That's pretty cool. But even cooler, when we look here, I did look earlier. Um, if we take, let's say, the move up here, we're starting here, and we take our move to the top and we compare, uh, we're roughly at about, oops, around there, we're roughly at about the two, two to one ratio where the correction is two uh, to the up move, which is one. And the up move really, it does offer a nice impulse look and feel to it. Although the only consideration, for example, is just the retrace, retracements. Um, well, no, they did just looks good. Different. There's. I was. I think I was thinking about the the Luna chart. Those retracements were a little bit, uh, not so much on the impulsive side. But anyway, it could pass. But was it this one? No, it wasn't this one on the on the the monthly. Yeah, see, even on the monthly, it looks nice, like has an impulse. But uh, on the weekly. There's good alternation between a potential two and four wave. Um, Time-wise, this one's longer, this one's shorter, complexity-wise, and, and uh, this one has the subdivisions, this one doesn't. Also, um, construction-wise, this one looks like some form of, of a, a flat or some other, and this is obviously not, it's just a mono wave. So that's pretty cool. Uh, interesting, you got this pattern up top here, often called the head and shoulders. So there's another nice example of head and shoulders playing out. But anyway, we return here and I just wanted to recognize that you get a nice 161.8 for the three against the one. And then if we compare the the one and the, the five here, that would be a nice one-to-one -one relationship. So really the, this lines up beautifully as an impulse, which you don't often get in Bitcoin price chart, at least on my experience from a long time frame. So in my opinion, actually, this is really exciting in terms of a, the room price potential. But at this point, so as I was looking at on, on the monthly really is where I saw this zigzag. So I, for, for this purpose, I'll, I'll, I'll just keep it. Um, but on the monthly, you really get the zigzag. And it's a beautiful uh, view of a zigzag on a monthly. Like this is a, a solid chart, in my opinion. It's quite nice. And I do believe we are potentially in the beginning of the three wave of, of, a, of, a, of a bigger, larger move against BTC is possible. Could also just be a zigzag. In fact, if you ask me, that's probably the most accurate is most likely it's probably a zigzag. Here's the other thing though, with cryptos, again, they behave differently. They, ret they retrace differently. For example, if we retrace this, actually it's not bad. It doesn't quite go to the 78. Six, but when we use price action with the actual prices, it does. And like, that's why 78.6 in crypto feels like a 61.8. And uh, mathematically, um, the square root of 61.8 is 78.6. So that's just, that is what it is. You know, it's a slightly different set of market activity. Also, I mean, anyway, you look at this, this candle here and it, sure we're still in the month it could it could fail and retrace a lot so whatever i don't want to say anything is done yet so you'd really want to see in april 
Um, and also I'll talk about it because it's so high, you just basically would want to see the price get, a, get above here um, in a stable way. And then, you know, it's likely going higher uh, rather than getting in here when it could just come down or who knows, right? Anyway, use whatever strategy you want. And this is financial advice. We're looking at the price charts here. Um, and this, this zigzag here looks so complete. We have a move up here, impulsive, and something new here as we get very strong moves to the upside with minimum retrace. Uh, for example, let's see here. Let's check this retrace from bottom to top. Uh, it just goes beyond 61.8 towards 78.6, but in, in, in my opinion, crypto style, because you can have such, such volatility and strong volatility to the up and down side. So then, you, you know, 78.6% 70, retracements is, is not as bearish in crypto in that sense. Um, just like you can easily get, you know, 2618, 3618 extensions. Speaking of extensions, whether this is um, a, like a one, two, three, four, five, uh, I'm guessing it's probably a, a, some form of zigzag. But anyway, let it, let it be a one, two, three, four, five. Either way, we have now the way they're constructed, they're so similar. It's just that with an impulse, one, two, three, four, five you have the extra fifth wave and the fourth wave and fifth, you know, you have the fourth and fifth wave, which together go bigger than a zigzag and makes it a five wave move as the impulse. Whereas the zigzag just stops at the, the end of the third wave, which was, is called a C. And instead you have an A and a B and a C. And then the C, C wave uh, is the completion. And then you have something new. Um, so in this case, regardless, we'd be in a C or a three. Okay, so here's, Here's the basic idea. We can play like this if you want A, B, and we don't know where the C is going to be. We can have ideas. And then you also have something like one, two, and then whatever, three, four, and five, wherever those would be. And that's that. That's the kind of distinction. And we could, again, um, okay. So having said that, that would mean that we'd probably have a more complex um, and bigger C wave because look, you didn't, you, yes, you came back to a 78.6, but, but the pattern itself here, this zigzag, the C wave, if it is a C wave of a zigzag, it only extended 61.8% of this A wave, which means there's strength to the opposite direction. Didn't even make it to one to one with the A wave. So, and 61.8 is like a, it's like a minimum almost for a, a regular type of zigzag, it's normal zigzag. So boom, to the upside. So let's see how that works. So as I said, again, I think this type of level here is key as a zone for, um, for the, the, the price, like it, you, we would want to see it break above and be stable, then, you know, then there's a big likelihood they will go higher. Um, another option, obviously, I don't want to say it has to go into this range. It could be just something where it has moved down, it's moving up, and then it continues down, whatever it has to do. This is a Bitcoin chart, you know? They, they do these things that you, as we see in other versions, but on uh, many of these pairs, especially the ones that we're looking at today, they're in, they're in the version against Bitcoin that have uptrends. So like on a, on a longer basis and are in or around their uptrends, not you know in their downtrends bottoming. And I do see potential bottomings for others, but we also notice this level here, I guess this general zone here where uh, the price bottomed. So we can bring it down here and uh, maybe say, you know, something like that. And that's quite a nice bottom right there. So that's the rune thoughts. We could get pullbacks here as people take profits. Who knows? This is more short term. We'll see how it looks in the next week, two, three. Mm. And yeah, none of this might happen. It might be a completely false consideration. 
and we could be pulling uh, continued bear markets. But so far, so good. And so we can maintain the uh, uh, optimistic potential of a price move here. And then if we were going to add some sort of extension, we can have a, an internal relationship one-to-one -one brings you to about 7,000 Satoshis. So that's fair. And then if you're really hot, really hot, that's quite a push. 161.8 would be, wow, uh, 19,000 Satoshis. So oh my bad. It's already not sorry, it's at 70,000 Satoshis. And that would be 190,000 Satoshis. Well, so um but the current price now is what 19,000 Satoshis. Why they don't put the whole number here for us? I guess it's just got I gotta see what's in front. And it's only three zeros and four zeros is thousands. So there you go. Okay, so we're at the 10,000s, 19,000 to be precise. And that's generally the rune thoughts. I'm gonna add the indicator. Let's see if we get any other information, but it's a, a very recent chart uh, in terms of time frame. Anyway, so what did we see? We saw one to two. Oh, we can compare uh, A plus time-wise, we can compare um, oh, I didn't want to start here. We can compare the A plus the B and say if A plus B equals C, that would be around the April of 2023 timeframe. So you could have a quite a nice year long bull market for, um, for Rune. Or if it's half of that, then maybe we're looking at um, October of 2022 as a time frame for a rune push to the upside. That's pretty cool. So there you have it. I think um, that is it. Other than we're going to show the indicator. Oops, we'll take the template. Classic indicator cluster. We have RSI. Yeah, it looks like it wants to push. Well, it's already been pushed. Yeah, MACD looks like it's turning and it's got some good strong momentum. Wow. Um, wow, top of the Bollinger Band. So this is this is interesting. Like, will it will it turn around from here and find some sort of support first and then go after a week or two? Or what's going to happen? Is it just going to break right up that? Bon Japan. Um, and then Ichimoku cloud is just above. So that'll be interesting that Ichimoku energy above, is it gonna be, well, it's green. So that gives potential, I guess, in that sense, maybe it, it is a reflect a remnant of a, or not a remnant because it's just the beginning, but the potential for a green cloud maybe. Uh, and then the price gets above the green cloud. So anyway, okay, I think we've done some time analysis here. We've done some price analysis to look at some levels and some time frames. So I think that's where we're gonna leave it with that. I like this chart too, because yeah, it's very clean to, to look at it in terms of um, some of these relationships. So it's it, 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 it works very well. I like it. Let's see how it goes. Okay, stick around for more. I'm gonna save this one as Rune BTC weekly roundup yeah stick around for more re weekly roundup with rune btc and more we've done two charts we've talked a lot i've talked a lot about it we're going to move on into into the next so we did luna we did rune we'll check matic okay adam is roughly where it was last week and it's it's uh, supporting at the the 20 week moving average and so yeah Check, take a look at yourself if you want. Okay, oops, that's not the movement I wanted. This is more the movement I wanted. We are quite at a reasonable trend line here. However you wanna play it, if you wanna play body to body, then you're already breaking. But if we're going price to price, including wicks, then we're at a spot, we're at a spot. And you know what? It makes sense here that there could be some form of um, 
support resistance in this in this zone here. So we'll see what it ends up looking like, but this price chart is not it's definitely not bullish in the same way that that rune is bullish. Okay. The indicators are not showing the same bullishness. And still negative momentum, just getting to a, the trend line. We haven't really completed a pattern yet of any note. And in that case, there is this option of the box. Price could just move in the box for some time. That could be whatever consolidation needs. Now this is into 2023, so maybe it doesn't need to go that far. Okay, but it it might do its thing. And then it can take its turn to keep going. But this is also the kind of price chart that it can do its thing. And um, that might be taking a while. Okay. Uh, I don't know exactly how it would look, but it could be one of those. The other option is finding strength in the next week or two and getting higher than this but at some point you're breaking below it and in that case i do see this area as a very healthy area to reach so i think the best best bet is to hold these kinds of levels here and then you're good all right so that's matic nothing really much to add to that are we not showing this for a reason Yeah, that's the other thing. Okay, so. So we do have this Ichimoku cloud here has some potential um, support, but in terms of Bollinger Band and 20 week moving average, uh, maybe it does need to get a rejection there. So maybe it does need to go up first and then take some time crack over the line eventually and then who knows do we get support here right at the top of this box that would be super bullish but more likely some sort of move down but then then you're under the the ichimoku cloud so like i said that's why it feels like does it become more long term i don't know bigger dip remember this is against btc so price can be going up against usd or just can be sideways or maybe it needs to be going down against usd we'll see what happens the charts play out as they do. And then we find reasons why after the fact, like try and you know, tie a reason. Uh, sometimes it can be reasonable to look at it that way and say, wow, the psychology of the market was heavily influenced by that. And it did affect price movement, price activity. There's no doubt. But often, oftentimes just the chart itself shapes or, or shares the shape and the the basically the status of the the psychology and um, the psychology isn't just in one point in time it's also in relation to all of the previous energy so when you're at a higher low uh, then and and then you and you have a chance to make and then you have the chance to make the higher high you know and that changes a trend or something like that these these where the price is situated is part of the psychology and what is going on around it is also uh, and has happened previously is also part of the psychology. So um, I guess what I'm saying is the, the price action will be affected by the environment of the things that's happening, but also it's it's gonna be affected in a way that's based on the other price action around it. That's why the same reason why in a bull market, bad news doesn't matter as much. And in a bear market, good news doesn't matter as much because it has also to do with the, the energy of the psyche. So, um, I think that's, that's where we're at with Matic, you know, it's, just, it's not quite certain at this point. Mm -hmm. And in that case, you know, the strategy can depend, it can vary. Um, you know, let's see if this holds, what it looks like in the coming weeks. Interesting. So that's Matic. 
Let's move over to Avalanche, Avax. I just wanted to note that there is a type of distribution element here. Don't like, oh yeah, we've broken down below the 20 week moving average. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how long this line will hold, but then again, you've got these, these narrowing Bollinger bands. So maybe there will be some sort of support level with lots of wicks and eventually you get here, but this just looks so distribution-y. You have already one move high, distribution, another move to that high, distribution, lower high with lots of selling wicks, distribution. I mean, how is this not one of those patterns that goes into distribution? I don't know. But the question is, yeah, do you just get to the to the channel and then you can keep going up? And that was the question. And this is against BTC. So um, yeah, think of Rune like this, you know, although Rune was a bit more complex. That's why I liked the Rune chart, but it, it went up, completed a, uh, its own market cycle to the downside and then had a new market cycle to the upside and together potentially formed, what is this, like a zigzag here? Let's see, what do we have? I mean, for all intents and purposes, you're done here and you made a zigzag, then, uh, why not? That could easily be the case and just have something like this. For now, this is a, a, a decent read in my opinion. And now we're beginning wherever we're gonna begin, we're gonna begin, um, it might've begun right here actually, or here. Yeah, probably around here. So boom, I mean, I'm not sure, right? But in terms of the energy of the price action, um, that's where it is. And then, then, then there's the danger of the, um, that one, right? Anyway, we'll see, but that's the thing, you know, oftentimes we could think this is a, a one, two, three, four, five. So maybe that'll be the case because they're constructed similarly, but oftentimes I'm noticing, especially in the BTC charts, that they are, they're more like corrective moves. Uh, so like an ABC rather than a big impulse move up. And then, yeah. And even if it is a big impulse move up, I don't know if it's a one of five, like, you know, you might have a one, two, three, four, five in this big impulse, but is this whole thing done then? And then you have a full ABC reset type thing. Or is it just a one of a bigger? And usually it isn't, not with the BTC price chart. So it can help with USD price chart sometimes to correlate. But yeah, we have we have increasingly negative momentum. So I think we're we're done with an ABC here. I think we'll be in a bit of a of a correction here for Avalanche for some time. So we'll take a look at it. That'll be interesting. And if that's the case, for example, we could measure it here comparing the whole ABC. Um, and let's imagine that we end like right here. So, and then we're, we're right here. So yeah, I mean, into 2023, we could be doing that. So now that, that builds the case for like, okay, well, is it really gonna be that bad? And in that case, maybe it's gonna be good. And it's not an ABC, maybe it's something we keep going. Um, and in that case, Time-wise, it might not, it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't have to be, it wouldn't have to be like that. But also if this ABC is done realistically by July, we would be, we'd be breaking like quite the lows. This, this zero to the trend line, at least we'd be breaking. That makes sense, but it might not confirm two stages of confirmation it, it, where it would be going below this B. That would be quite low because you don't really even have much support action here other than all the way down here. So I don't know if it, 
it would go all the way down here to uh, what would this be like 29 thirty thousand satoshis so in that case you know there is room for keeping going higher i don't think this has to be some catastrophic price chart that i'm talking about here but i do see that we are completed this this uh, you know up down up i think we're completed for some time here and we're going to find correction this distribution looking pattern says enough for now as well as we're down below 20 week moving average we're going to make it down towards the lower end of the bollinger band at least and in that point i mean if you're not already yeah you're you know forget about it it's not even a point now we're just looking at horizontal levels then you're below this horizontal level at that point down here then you're maybe you go up but that's resistance at that point most likely so best bet is down here and we've said that before so this general zone here between uh what is that the psychological hundred thousand down to about ninety thousand mm -hmm. avalanche against btc okay not too many more but a few so here's Solana, maybe a handful, like four of them. Here's Solana. I just wanted to show a similar thing. You know, it had a bit of less of a, a choppy distribution, but, and in that case, maybe it will get a bit of a push up at some point around here. We are quite tight against this downstrending, down sloping uh, resistance line here. So in that case, also, there has been quite a prolonged, well, I mean, it's not long enough. It's going to continue at some level, but it has been going for enough time that it could turn around. And it is, it's showing relatively uh, positive momentum. So it could turn around before going further down. Um, so yeah, we'll watch this break of this trend line to show something like that. But, and also because it's, it's at the lower end of the Bollinger Bands, it, it could push back up towards this, this, 20 week moving average it never really got a another confirmation here for real other than what was happening here so there you go and then you know maybe then you flirt with this box again i don't know maybe you only make it to the underside of the box and this chimogu cloud not too confident overall I, I get the sense that this area is 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 in play and we're most likely going to get some sort of move uh, zigzag of sorts all right uh, maybe you get a four. Nah, it just doesn't work. It ain't gonna happen. I, I mean, it could obviously, but yeah, coming down here. That's Solana. Not much else to say. We since we're talking shapes, let's look at this one today. On a weekly, on a monthly, I, I feel like it's also some sort of zigzag. But in that sense, well, maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's gonna have a, a strong enough market to go higher and in this case this is a one two that would be cool um let's see let's take some measurements here though from this low to high we're only at a 78.6 extension which is weak it's not one to one and it's definitely not more than one to one so in that case regardless not a big fan you might want to choose this one instead and say there's a one, two, three, four, five possible. Um, just not as likely. Doesn't look or feel like it. So uh, this is probably an ABC and it's relatively weak relative to a, a one to one. It's less than that. It's a 78.6. Now, in terms of time, we can start from where's top? Where are we going to call top? I think we got a. Well, I think the monthly would help us there. Just, that's what we would do. Check on the monthly, say this is the top here. This is the top here, like right here. When I say top, I don't mean top price, I mean top as in before the trend turn. And it turns here. So that's first of January month. So let's look in the first of January month. It's probably here. 
yeah, and that's the 17th, but it kept falling here. So we can start here, 27 December. So we'll start through January, okay? We start this candle here, okay? So let's do that time analysis. Oh, I'm enjoying this. We're doing time analysis, price analysis with these charts. Now that they're showing more shape and conviction, um, not, you know, they was already showing this move up, but uh, I'm also, yeah, like I said, conviction is showing more understanding for me, more clarity. Okay, so we start from here and we said we go to that January candle, which was here. Yep. So that is the move up. And so then the move down, we could say if it's going to be one to one, we're going to 2023 as well. So some of these are showing the same timing. And you know what? When we look at chain link, look at the chain link price chart in terms of time, it does that. It it has it had a really strong and drawn out move to the upside, but now the, the move to the downside is equally drawn out. Well, actually, maybe not equally. Okay, we'll take a look at Chainlink just to do a time analysis there. So anyway, there you have it. Uh, what did we say? If it's around 61.8, we're at uh, 22 October. Oh, sorry, August. Uh, that type of week. So there you go. Oof. And if it's longer than one-to-one, -one, we're looking into the end of 2023 to 2024 time frame. Quite the mountain here. We'll see. Okay, so that's time analysis. And we did price analysis with the extension. Um, if you wanna do a bit more price analysis, we can look at retracements, but uh, yep, 61.8 is down here. So probably a 78.6 feels uh, more reasonable, but maybe the 50 is where it lands, in which case that's, that's in its own way bullish. And maybe we are seeing some sort of um, you know, more positive, bigger move to the upside. We'll see. I, th I think this level is, is reasonable down here. Down here even. I don't know why. It's just the sense I get. Um, what else? No, that's it. So then we go to, okay, thanks for Solana. Um, I'm going to just quickly jump over to link here just to do that time analysis and say, because it's not just for Solana, but it's for a couple of those other ones we were looking at. But yeah, whoa, that's a lot of drawing lines. Let's take some out for now. Who cares? We're at this one right here. So yeah, it's at that level, but I'm more con considering here the time. So this is a weekly price chart. Okay, so that's quite a big structure. It went up, went up for many weeks, more than, than Solana, I think. But anyway, um, 100 weeks, 749 days or so, 750 days. So let's compare that and we go, To here and so we're not even one to one yet not at one to one yet although look the topping here is much less um, strong than solana or avalanche avalanche at least have a, a bigger disc but that's the thing though their, their distribution is still distribution this one is a much more violent distribution to the downside uh, the other ones are more sideways and classical distribution, if you want to call it that, or not classical, it's just a different market. You see this in, in, in stocks as well, where they distribute like this after a, a blow off top, so to speak. Well, that's why it becomes a blow off top because of the way it distributes. Um, all right, so there you have it. You know, we're looking again, uh, at least for Chainlink here, we're looking at the August of 2022. So, that's a one-to-one -one there. So maybe there is more strength in Solana and Avalanche and those other ones against BTC. Okay, I'm just curious here because you know I'm starting the time over here, but is there a reason to start it here? 
No, we made an like an 88.6 retracement. That's deep enough to not consider it part of this trend. Okay, so that's that. I am done with the chain link. Just wanted to compare time frames. And then yeah, BNB is just going below that level. It's also doing some some similar type of distributory movement. Um, but again, distribution can also be reaccumulation. So this could all become one giant reaccumulation. But yeah, similar to where it was last last week. Okay, just got this trend line breaking to the downside of it. So watch for that cloud down below. Um, not much on BNB, but Origin Trail pushing below the the thousand. I think it's a good turnaround time for Origin Trail. I want to recognize that. Um, not only the shape is getting broken out to the right, but whatever, it's it's not nothing nothing special to do with that. It could still go down. But again, at this two hundred week moving average, two hundred week moving average, and also even if it's going to stay down here, it's bound to come back up. It's basically going been going pretty hard down. Come back up to this two hundred sorry, 20 week moving average um, and get rejected there and still come back down. And in that case, it's something similar like this. You make your move down, you go up and you come back down. And so it, it could do such things and still be reasonably um, understood. So that's it for origin trail. So I think based on that, you know, you got some good 100% 80% type moves in play, that's for sure, against BTC. That's the sense I'm getting. I think I'm gonna say that's fair. And so yeah, Origin Trail is a, a nice one to look at and potentially um, play with if that's what you like to do. You're also towards the lower end of the Bollinger Bands and such, so nice reason for a bounce. Um, what else was it? Oh yes, let's look at the timing of this one we take from here although i'd i'd probably yeah i'd probably take from here and it's a full reset that's not so bullish notch is probably good to take from okay so from there wow we're at a two to one ratio of time it took to go up time it takes to go down roughly two to one and um that's pretty cool so is that time for a turnaround uh, yeah that would be great Let's see what it looks like though. Origin trail. <clears throat> okay. That's that. Oh, and then Darrow. Oh yeah, I really wanted to talk about Darrow as well. And Ada. Ada is going to be one to talk about soon too in terms of potential turnaround. Uh, but Darrow is also showing, unfortunately, these lower highs and selling pressure here at the top of the Bollinger Band area. It's It, it came back down to the Bollinger Band already. So although it had that push above this channel, it's coming back down to touch it. Best case scenario, it can hang around. Uh, well, best case scenario is it can hang around here and stay above. In fact, and then go sideways, that would be very strong. Uh, worst case scenario is probably comes right back down and then who knows where it goes from there. Um, and intermediate is somewhere in between. Okay, that's the general sense for Darrow, but Overall, you know, you had your move up here, came down, went up here, came down, went up here. It's coming down. I, this is a very important level here, that's for sure. Okay, that's the Daryl price chart. And we are at the point though, nicely in momentum, hopefully. Oof. Hopefully for, for Daryl, um, bulls, let's call it. Uh, we're at the point where, well, oh, is it though? No, I was wondering maybe maybe it would start to go sideways, but to be fair, this is a weekly time frame, and it hasn't really come down and then go sideways. So in that sense, it, it 
this is just a mini crossover and it's going to keep going. So, yeah. That's just the sense I'm getting, Daryl. You know, de risk if you want. None of this is financial advice. Good luck out there. I'm definitely wishing you all well. Stick around for more. I'll keep watching the Daryl price chart. It's definitely been one of the more exciting price charts for me throughout these many weeks when it was going well. I don't remember exactly when I started, but thanks for the recommendation. And so, and we keep watching it because it was such a good recommendation to keep watching. Great. Learned a lot through this Daryl price chart. And we continue to potentially learn more, including for Ichimoku lovers, friends of Ichimoku Cloud, and users of Ichimoku Cloud. Setups like this where the price is coming towards it. And you know, I'm I'm used to it breaking through like at this leg of the Ichimoku where it's thin and, and narrow from the upturn. Uh, but in this case where they're they're coming towards it and it's but it's thin and it's just beginning to form, you know, it's still like the narrow part here. So yeah, interestingly, um, we'll we'll learn a bit about each Moku cloud with this. Okay. Also just generally about distributions in, in terms of how long will this last and where, what levels will it go to? Also in terms of time, let's check our time. We'll take from here to here. And we will say one-to-one, -one, you know, hey, one-to-one -one is not that far away. It's May. June, let's call it, the okay, end of May. That's promising. Unfortunately, if we're going like a bigger time frame, like two to one, then that's uh, January of 2023. So the rest of the year of 2022, which, okay, that is what it is. Anyway, good times, exciting times. And let's see how this goes. That's it for that price chart. That's the Daryl price chart. And by the way, this is also one that looks like it could be a nice five-way move and could be make, could be going towards uh, potentially a, um, a zigzag now that I look at it more cleanly, more clearly, I should say. Uh, and in which case, let's see what kind of retracement levels can we be asking for here? Yeah, you know, you can still hit this uh, this retracement level previous all time highs here back in 2020, July, um, and still be in zigzag territory. And if we combine that with time analysis, where did we start around here, right? This was May, yeah. So if we if we if we compare with some time analysis. That could be an A, some sort of B, and then move to a C. Uh, that would be interesting. Uh, and that would be interesting. Again, we'd be learning from Ichimoku Cloud because you'd be coming up against it in that case. So we'll see. Um, what else? Oh, right. Uh, maybe it will extend it for that price extension from that low level, which fits quite nicely. We already have it boxed. Um, so we'll go here we go. Here we go. Okay. So there's your 1618. One to one is not super. Oh, wait, that's not even the level. Oof. Are we sure? Did I do that correctly? Yeah, that makes sense. I don't know what I did wrong there. Good. Glad I tried that again. So there you go. Yeah, it didn't look right. That's quite the level here. That would be the 100,000 Satoshi's level, or just more a bit more than that. So, I mean, there's your case for 100,000 Satoshi Darrow. Okay, I hope that's exciting for you, but uh, you know, no FOMO and that is still considered hopium, all right? 
We are not clear what this pattern is yet. And if it's trying to do a full market cycle or if it's in the middle of a market cycle, uh, like two thirds in or whatever, you know, doing the B wave of an ABC to the upside. Um, and even more intense would be if this is a one wave of one, two, three, four, five. But uh, you know, as I said, on these BTC price charts, five wave impulses don't seem to be the, the big complex wave that ends up happening. Anyway, we'll see though. We'll 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 definitely see. So stick around for more of that. So that is Darrow BTC. And ADA. ADA BTC is down in our box. Nothing much new, just to say that momentum wise, I mean, it could, yeah, it could still be some time, could still be some time. Um, but at some point, it'll get a little bounce. Uh, we are at the bottom of the Bollinger Band, just sliding down it. So at some point a bounce, I don't know when, either that or it's got to break down hard. Maybe it'll break down one more time to like one more hard candle or something like that, or wick, maybe it'll be a wick down to this 200 day, sorry, 200 week, 200 week moving average. In fact, I won't be surprised if you get, and that would be a nice reversal opportunity. And it would bring us right down to this 200 week moving average, reverse back up in the same handle. That would be pretty strong move and signal a potential to move back to the upside. Not, not to try and claim new highs, but um, nice. So I do think this is a five wave impulse. And on that note though, however, if we check our retracement, we are, well, I guess in crypto, we're still giving the 78.6 an opportunity as a, still a bullish move. So having said that, we could be in still in some form of ABC where you have a five-wave move up. Oh, this three-wave move down is so strange. It's like, this. Like, what is this? Just doesn't do it for me. Feels like it needs to be something more than that, but I guess it's severe enough. Well, that, yeah, that brings, that would be a pretty decent move down to here. And that would signal a relatively strong turnaround for the zigzag, if it is a zigzag indeed. But, you know, this is just weird. I don't know, it's just scary now to, to really think about it if you want it to turn around, but it really gives an opportunity to look at that 700 as a full reset and a full market cycle. And instead of an ABC, you've had some sort of full market cycle of one, two, three, four, five and then ABC, and that in itself makes a full market cycle like this, but on a bigger scale. And yeah, we'll see though, still to be determined week by week, we get a more clarity and a better picture. So that's ADA price chart. I do think that these levels here where we are, if you see them, they're either key support or resistance levels of previous time. So I don't see why not even for a bounce towards the 20 week before it turns back around. But my guess, what would make it, and I think I've talked about this already, so I'm sorry for going this over again, but I get something like this would be okay because then you're going to the top of the Bollinger Band from the bottom of the Bollinger Band, okay? It might take a little bit of, you know, whatever. It might break right through the, the, the 20 or it might not it might have to chop around it first before getting above. It makes a better B wave from this being an A wave. It makes a better B wave, but it also shows a weak pattern because this B wave is finishing lower than its actual high finishes down here. Then the C wave would definitely be lower and it would be relatively down to the 700 Satoshi's level would be a much more reasonable pattern and move. Okay. Um, so that's ADA price action. And I, and I can definitely see that happening. Let's go there at the A, there at the B, at the Ichimoku cloud and Bollinger Band confluence. 
and that's 400 for the C at a one-to-one. -one. So I could definitely see a 78.6 bringing us to about a thousand or 900. Okay, I, I see that. And then that would be a, that would be actually be a relatively, even though it's, it's weak, yeah, man, you're starting lower. So if it's weak, it's gotta be weak. It doesn't make sense that you would have a weakness up here and then it doesn't show weakness down here, but hey, it is what it is. Maybe you get down to the 400 level. That would be rough, but possible. 700 possible. And then again, that 900 was, is also possible at that 78.6 level um, right here. Okay, 900 or 1,000. Um, that is eight of price thoughts. I know it's kind of messy. That's because we're, it's like we're in right in the middle of something and it could, it, it just makes more sense for a more complete uh, pattern that it would do something like that where it comes up higher and plays around there. But either way, um, if this is an A, B, and a C, then that makes sense as well, that this would be ending here or around here at this kind of a level. And then it could go, or yeah, then it, or, you know, down here, and then it could go higher. Um, But yeah, no, no, it just doesn't, it just doesn't feel that way now at this point. Then again, previous all time high in a bull market, anything can happen when there's crazy exuberance, especially it's been dropped down so much. So smart money or more money will come in at some point just for a good trade. So we'll see what it looks like though. Does it have to change to this kind of wave pattern down here? Uh, or or will it be a bit more of a of a quicker turnaround? That uh, took a while. That's a long accumulation. Okay. Anyway, that's the Ada price chart. That's all for for that. And then yeah, two more. We're gonna go through a pirate chain and then Bitcoin. Mm, pirate chain. Oops, that's the daily and I'll, I'll come back with it. Stick around if you want more fire chain. I'll come back with a daily price chart. But on the weekly, what a nice big candle we had taking it to the top of the Bollinger Band. It can use some consolidation here to maintain some of that strength so it doesn't fizzle out all of its, all of its power right away. Um, and uh, they can build a bit more of a, um, an uptrend. Nice support at that 20-week moving average. And boom, breaking out of a previous, you know, channeling move. And yeah, at the top of the Bollinger Bands and lots of room to the upside with some key levels. So these key levels down here are handled for now. And we're just at this, at, we're gonna use this. We're just at this level here, as you can see, the price is right there, just at this important key uh, level, okay? And then from there, we have this zone right here, roughly, okay? Can even bring it up here. And so that's the next level. Okay, we can consider level to level and see what the resistance brings. After this level, then we have this level up here. But for now, we are expecting about 5,000 to 7,000 Satoshi price action. And from there, maybe it comes back down to where it is now, or it can, can go higher. The, the ideal scenario is that it goes higher towards this Ichimoku cloud formation. Woo, that would be phenomenal. But either way, um, that's all I really have to say about the power chain price chart for the weekly. Looking good so far. And then to finish it off, we hit up that Bitcoin price chart on the weekly. Oh, this is just this is just trend line touch points. Um, where are we looking? Let's look at. Let's look at loading the price chart layout, BTC. 
weekly roundup. Good. Okay. So we have these key dotted line levels. We have that key boxy area and we are in between the, the two, right in that Ichimoku cloud. And so I guess it's turning out that we do have the capacity to churn inside the Ichimoku cloud. Last week was another, you know, another wick up to the top of the cloud and then closed back down. Um, fascinating. It, to me, it looks like a spinning device here is just winding. And I get the sense, you know, my, my overall sense is um, that this is a terminal, a terminal pattern in a bigger uh, five wave move. Well, but it's a terminal pattern itself. So it's in fact a five wave move, but it's made up of corrective moves. And, and then we're out of here. That's just the sense I'm getting. But anyway, it's been interesting to watch and I hope you continue watching. We'll see how the churn plays out within this Ichimoku cloud zone. It's very cool as, the, as we watch the momentum slowly uh, regain the positive level. But it can take a few weeks before we get to the brink. And even then we could be right on the brink and, uh, and not go yet, but however, saying, having said that, it's relatively positive momentum and price, like if we look back here, price was going up quite high when it was towards the end of the, of the relative negative momentum. So first some chop, then some move to the upside. That's the, that's the Bitcoin price chart expectation. Having said that, it can also drop lower, okay? Cool, I think that's all I have to say for these price charts for today. This has been awesome. I hope it's been a good one for you. And I'm going to come back with more, more weekly roundups and then more specific videos. So take a, a, keep a lookout for that. And I'm wishing you all the best. Love, peace and happiness. Until next time, goodbye.